Afternoon guys, this is the first look at Presto Sharp. Um, I wanted to do this before we start breaking in everything down just so you know where to find everything. So it may seem a little bit long winded but it's predominantly just so you can get an overview of what everything is doing. So this is the main screen you're represented with and yours will be pretty much blank. If you want information like this just click up here where it says demo mode and they'll throw a load of dummy data in there so you can actually see what it would look like once your business starts operating online. So as you can see here, this is what you'd be presented with when you log into the admin page. Your dashboard's basically telling you your total sales, the number of orders you've had, cart values, which I assume is on average. So average cart would be $131.55, $131.55, uh, number of visits to the site, Conversion rate is 1.65%. That basically means the number of people have come to the site that have actually purchased is 1.65%. And the profit. So that would be your sales, and that's the profit after cost relating to the um, postage, supplier, um, you know, all basic business stuff. Uh, so that's your end profit after all your costs. Um, very simple, you can see there's the quantities here, there's the dates. Um, I assume this is quantity of visitors, not quantity of sales, but maybe, yeah, because there's only 6,000 6, sales, so I assume that's the quantity of visitors per day. You can see it sort of had a trend, and these are the dates of each, well, each day is here. So you can see between the 26th and 28th, you've had a bit of a spike, and you've hit 73,590 visits that day and if we slip down here um, you can see the forecast of business growth over the period of time from January to December and you can flip through the different variables to see what that actually converts to your traffic increases for example uh, conversion ratios and all the other information you need relating to a business these are your last 10 orders. So these are people that have made purchases and what product it was. So it won't be product to it. What it'll be is like, I don't know, furry dog. And the total cost of that item is $61.80 date. And obviously that order was canceled, but checking payment, payment error, waiting check payment, awaiting bank wire transfer. And you can add more to this. There's other things in here that you can purchase, expand it out, like analytics, you may actually want to add what countries you're getting most sales from, etc. because you may actually want to gear, the, gear your business towards where you get the most sales. For example, a lot of the stuff I get involved with is predominantly the US market. Um, so I may actually want to gear it towards the US market more than Europe or Asia, for example. Um, the payment means, what are people paying with that may actually want you to find a better merchant processor or do you need to emphasize more on PayPal? Point is, there's bits and pieces here that can enhance your dashboard. Now, hopefully it's left this one open, yeah. Your traffic breakdown, unique visitors, etc. And you can expand these out, what they were looking for. So you found most of them through what would be your website name, google.com, obviously in searches and direct traffic. So Majority's come through from pressershop.com on a redirect. They've gone to that website, then come to yours, then follow the Google search, and then people that actually know your website name. So obviously, if this is going up, you're doing it right. It means that, that you're getting found easier, and also returning customers are coming back. Customer and newsletters, new customers 160, new subscribers 64, total subscribers 772 message because this does have a message center so you can deal with everything inside this and I do recommend getting a couple of other people that you can trust or that work with you to also deal with messages because you're not always available 24 7 so it's nice to have some other people that are capable of dealing with messages on your behalf online visitors currently 32 in the last 30 minutes active shopping carts 3 currently pending orders return exchanges abandoned carts out of stock products one of the things I do recommend if you're getting a lot of abandoned carts it's worth scrutinizing why because I know sometimes the payment gateways for example don't work they go faulty for whatever reason and it could be a case that people can't finish the purchase so I do recommend keeping an eye on that just in case there's a bug in the software and obviously you can do a refresh with this 
and you can do the dashboard searches on day, month, year, day one, day one, month one, year one. Right, so that's a basic overview. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. It's just so that you can see what you're looking at and you can investigate that further. The bits I really want to talk about are these bits down here. So you've got your orders. I'll open this in a new tab. And this will have your sales through so you can actually view that and have a look at the order see what the issue is is a customer happy is their address correct you may actually want to check addresses as well because sometimes I know on one of my other sites they don't fill in the information then people are complaining they haven't had the goods but they've paid through PayPal and some of the information has been missing for example they've done it as a credit card payment which didn't have their information so sometimes you do get errors, so it is worth double checking some of this stuff as well. Invoice address, it's the same, because it may be a business, so it may be separate, and it may be get delivered to the home address. Valid orders placed, total spend, and obviously this is the customer name, so you can actually monitor your customers as well, because obviously if you get some customers that do too many returns or something, there may be a problem with that customer, so you can actually monitor people through this as well. You got order numbers as well, so it means that people can actually refer that number to you as well so if somebody's got a problem with an order they can give you that number and you can look it up through that through the name and uh, multiple ways to do that and obviously invoices invoice generation there's different types enable invoices enable tax breakdown enable product image etc etc self-explanatory stuff Credit slips, because obviously if somebody's had something returned, they may actually prefer to have a credit slip, so you could do that, but you, I think you can actually credit the account. Let's just check from to, there's nothing showing here, but I think you can credit the account. Delivery slips and shopping carts. Now you can see my carrier there, have a look at that. John Doe, registered such and such, valid orders placed, total spend since registered, 1819 what they purchased brown bear cushion so that was in the cart this is the cart information click through that as a product so that's the orders we'll go through catalog now now catalogs when you set this up it's worth listing how you want your business set up because it's going to be much easier than going back over products so the main thing is you want to make sure you sort things out via brands and categories for example you may have say Nike but you've got Nike T-shirts, Nike tracksuits, Nike um, sports shoes. Well, those would be separate categories. So this is what I'm saying. If you're doing sports stuff, for example, you want to get your brands in there, populate that first, then populate your categories, and then start going through the products. Because what happens is when they're listed, they'll be searching for the brands and the categories um, rather than going through products where you may have 5,000 products they break down to exactly what they're looking for so make sure you break it down in the right order in the first place um, so that's where I'd start start with your brands and start with your categories then move on to products but in this case because we're going down we'll start with products with a product you've got to decide what it physically is in this case as you can see you've got a custom customized mug hummingbird notebook brown bear notebook and these are the categories they're sitting in they're stationary they've got a reference number um, how much they cost and the quantity is in stock the quantities in stock can actually stop orders if it runs to zero as well so bear that in mind now we do an edit on one of these just so you can get an idea of how all this works what you have is the basic settings you'll add the image of the item so you just click on that and then upload the image what the description is that's a summary full description so in here you just put your short like here white ceramic mug size and then the full description of what it is customize your mug you know you can put whatever description you like in there obviously up to 21,844 categories but personally I recommend just keeping it short and sweet maybe 500 words to a thousand words maximum um, add features 
choose a feature to add compositions paper type color size frame size why would you have these because for example you're doing t-shirts you have different sizes of t-shirts and may have different sizes in stock you may have 50 large and one small so this is why things like size color and everything else become relevant and they're added as features then obviously these are the two brands that are in stock here because these are the only two brands in the system this would be your Nike your Adidas or whatever and obviously you can delete those as well in some cases you may not have any of this because it's a mug with no brand or anything on it the price and then the price including the tax and as you can see here it can set the tax routes for uh, rules for you mine is set up for the United Kingdom but you could have the US and other things set up in this as well you can import that depending on what country your your system set up on uh, when you initially set up your Presto shop um, then obviously the categories what's available and you can see it's home accessories home accessories and that's basically all the categories in this system at the moment so you got the main home site where you what you normally have is your home and then the breakdown of your main categories under there as you can see here clothes then accessories and this is what I'm saying when you do your categories and stuff sit and write them down on a piece of paper and break it down properly because you may find that you suddenly do um, accessories then decide to do home accessories but you may have already added about 50 items and then had to go through and edit them all again and change them to the new categories which is why it's worth spending a day making sure you've got the setup right in the first place so that's that quantities as you can see 300 minimum quantity for sale is one so if it goes to zero it will actually turn around and say there's no stock and as you can see here low stock level leave empty to disable send me an email when the quantity is below or equals to this level so you could put there say you put it 10 it will actually email you when it hits 10 to tell you order some more simple as that availability behavior when out of stock deny orders allow orders use default behavior which is deny orders label when in stock label when out of stock this will be what it actually shows on the main screen and the availability dates so the point being is what I try to do is I put a quantity in here then like I said when it hits 10 I'll order some more stock it will never be out of stock because quite simply unless I was hit by a bus there, there would be me intervening by up in the stock as soon as it arrives and once this hits 10 I know that within a week I'll replenish it anyway if it goes to zero I still want the orders because as soon as the stock arrives it will be sent straight out anyway shipping height white width depth weight this is for your couriers so they know the size of the parcels simple stuff it's the same as you'd fill out when you're doing this if you're actually in one of the stores default delivery time you can edit I'll open that up just so I can have a quick look products general catalog mode number of days which the product is considered new maximum size of short description quantity of discount based on products da 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 we'll go over that later I'm not getting into it in too much detail I'm trying to run through it as quick as possible delivery time if in stock three four days you can edit these as well delivery time if out of stock so like for, for example if that's UK you may put a five day delivery on it and if it's out of stock you may put 14 day shipping fees does it incur any extra costs that depends on your courier and something to look at later on because it may be dimensions and everything are right but at the same time they add an extra certain amount over a certain meterage and you may just be over so it might be stick five pounds in there to cover the extra cost i said five pounds not 50 there you go um simple and yes it will take a bit of time to get used to this and it will take a bit of time of uh, updating but don't worry once you get it running and into a flow you'll skip through these pages quite quickly because it's not that complicated once you start doing it retail price tax price UK standard rate of tax 20% total price 1668 included in the tax and there's the cost price which you may actually add another price to it I mean for example if this was a virtual good then there would be no pre price to it because it's virtual for example selling an ebook uh, price per unit of tax excluded so that's without a tax per kilo per litre etc etc 
priority management shop currency country group and that's all these have little breakdowns sometimes one customer can fit into multiple price rules prioritizing allow you to define which rules apply first something I haven't used myself but we'll get there we'll go over that at another point as well SEO which is a search engine optimization these are like putting your meta titles in there uh, different title from the product name enter it here if you have a different title to the so you may actually have custom custom mug for example uh, custom drinking mug and some other keywords that you may actually want to throw in there that is not actually the description but it's for SEO purposes then meta description may also be rather chunky with its um, keywording around specific mugs for example white mug custom white mug custom graphics or whatever you try and squeeze some extra uh, keywords in there that are relevant to that product then fr friendly url is the bit that shows up here so you could have white white mug customized as a url very basic but things like that help with seo then if you can't find it redirection page where does it go because sometimes you have to temporary pages and I'm sure you can customize some of these. I think you can. So, for example, um, say the web page went down, redirection went offline. You may actually send it somewhere else. Uh, say, for example, to a different mug page, which can be altered in there. I'm sure you can. Yeah, there you go. Permanent redirect, 301, permanently display another product or category instead. So, for example, say you had this specific mug and it's the 332 milliliter just as a just as something yet you you can't get them anymore but you've got a 500 milliliter well the redirect should go to the 500 milliliter because it's still a white mug just that it's half liter or whatever so it's still trying to get the sale even though this one is not available anymore go to the options where do you want your product to appear everywhere that's not all over the internet it's all over the website so it can go in catalogs only search only or nowhere so for example you may not want everything physical unless somebody's looking for it um, so the point is you can break down where it can be visually seen especially if you've got lots of products then you've got your tags in here if you don't know what tags are that's the sort of things like uh, white mug custom mug um, printed mug that sort of stuff printed cup just some keywords that relate to the physical product conditions and rest, uh, can references is it new is it second hand is it refurbished because for example you could be selling antiques ISBN is the ISBN is the international standard book number which is on pretty much every single book which is why it's called the international standard book number the ISBN number means that they, if they've got it here, they can refer it from elsewhere as well because they may be looking for a specific book, which also makes it more easy to search and they can confirm it's the right book. An example of that, say you're doing a college course and they said you need this uh, carpentry book. If you've got the ISBN number and they can search for the ISBN number, it will actually show up here saying they've got the right book. That's why it's useful to have that. Here we have the EN, European and Japanese, but it's widely used internationally. It's this superset of the UPC code. All products marked with an EN will be accepted in North America. So there's another barcode number that can go in there. UPC barcode, as you can see, is to make it easier for people to find them. But you may also find that you could interface this with something else. Cause I don't think Presto Shop does this, but you could scan goods in and out as well. So, for example, if you've got the ISBN numbers and you can scan the products in and out, it could deal with stock levels. But I'm not sure if Presto Shop can do that yet. But if you've got the numbers here, you could definitely have some sort of interfacing that could recognize the stock levels. Uh, customization can personalize the product by entering some text by providing custom image files. So, the custom label there, text or file. So what it could be, customers can personalize the product by entering some text or providing a customer. What this is, they can put like John's mug or they can send a picture of somebody's face and you can print it on there. And obviously you can add more fields to that as well. Yeah, delete that. Attach new files. Okay, we're not really getting into that today. 
Now we'll move on to categories. Like I said, I just want to do an overview today, but if I can cover a lot of this, it means I'm not going to go into this in the other videos. Because if you watch this long-winded, boring video, it should make it easier for the, uh, the future videos, which are going to be a bit less broken down, because I'll just go, this is this plugin, this is how it works. So as you can see here, we, this is our categories. You've got categories, clothing, discover our favorite fashionable discoveries. So this is the full description and position. The positions, I believe, are on the menu in the sense of it's the way they're around. I normally do them in alphabetical order, but hey-ho, you may choose to do it a different way for different reasons. Reasons, For example, your top sellers, you might want to put on the top. If you, if you mainly sell T-shirts, you might want T-shirts as your first thing over, I don't know, um, cookery. Because obviously cookery is, starts with a C and not a T, so it'll be higher on the list. So these are categories within the categories, so the, uh, within clothing. So this is categories within categories. So we've gone categories, gone clothing, and we've got men and women's clothing. And there's T-shirts for men and women. And there could be more categories in these as well, so let's click on men's. No. But you could add another one, for example, you could break it down to size instead of it being a reference thing. Sometimes that's more useful for people like myself. They're like here in Spain, a lot of this stuff's very narrow, so I'd rather just go straight to my size and filter out everybody else that's too skinny. Uh, for, for Because our size differences between UK and Spain, our body shapes are different. Uh, so you may actually want to put that in as a category, but it all depends how you set it up. Now we'll edit men's just so we can see what men's actually looks like and how an editing category looks like. So this is men's category, display it, yes. Parent category, as you can see here, is as clothing. What that actually means as men, so it's t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, men's accessories from basic to original creations, full description. And you can put a different image. So for example, you may have a man in a suit, or in this case, you've got a generic looking bag. Um, then a thumbnail, which is obviously the same image, but you can have a separate thumbnail as well, because you may actually be more textual and want something a little bit different. Then menu thumbnails you may want, but in this case, as you can see, they didn't want it. And as you can see here, you put your meta title. So that would be men's, so it could be men's clothing and accessories rather than just men because obviously this is what it shows in the menu and you may not want a long-winded expression but you may want it for the meta meta title so you may put men's menswear accessories and clothing something like that and then put a longer description as you can see it's telling you you've got 160 characters meta title 70 characters keywords men clothing bags you put them in there. Friendly URL, men. But you may actually put men's items, men's clothing, men's whatever. And different types of group who can access it, visitors, guests, and customers. Because for example, you may have an exclusive clothing collection only available to members who have already purchased from you. Or there could be a discount for members who have already purchased for you. Well, you could actually create a new group where these items are only accessible to them through that category because you have to have purchased something to be access, be able to access it. This is where that group access comes in. Okay, so that's categories. Now monitoring doesn't have a lot in it at all. List of empty categories. And now I assume this is monitoring, there we go. List of up the empty category, list of products with combinations but without available quantities for sale, list of products without combinations or without. So these, basically these are the ones where you've got bits missing. It's telling you, like me, it's going, hey Matt, you've got five categories with no images. It would put them there saying, and it would tell me which ones they are, just so I know if I miss something, or maybe I've got somebody else uploading stuff. Uh, somebody's putting descriptions in, somebody else is doing something else. Well. They could refer to here to see which bits are missing, you know, because if different people are doing different bits and they may not want to do it at the same time because somebody updates somebody else's other information and undoing it. So here you can at least see where, where things are actually going wrong. Attributes and features. You can add more here, like I said, size, color, dimensions, paper type. And you could have something a little bit different. 
I mean, for example, you may have more than one sizes. You could have small, medium, large, but you may have European sizes or something else where you could have foot sizes and clothes sizes. You know, so you may have more than one set of sizes, maybe. Um, brands and suppliers, very simple. You can see you can logo them as well. It's not too difficult. I'll go into one just so we can go over it. Different, different dimensions for yeah brands let's go into one of these views so you got the different attributes relating to it each item has its own brand information hummingbird notebook the best is yet to come frame poster because they've got different dimensions on it different specs personally I recommend keeping it simple to begin with and build it up unless you sit there and need all this information but it depends what you're selling um, so basic settings got a cover image what it looks like combinations so you can have more than one because there may be a discount on this as well I'm not sure how that works in Presto shop uh, but for example let's say you bought three items you may get this discount on shipping and stuff or you may actually be able to put a discount of 20% for buying multiple items but I'm not sure if it's an additional thing to press the shop so that's what I'm sort of saying I'm not 100% on that um, shipping information with Kobo pricing SEO all that stuff's the same as the other ones so we'll skip over products go down to files nothing in files okay discounts there we go there's a discount section this isn't set up yet I'm not going to go through this yet because you can just add new cart rolls and add them to it but some of the modules can make a difference as well which I'm not really going to go into this too much stocks what we've actually got in stock in the breakdown what the product is the reference ID for our, our shop who the supplier is the status which is basically assume it's got stock physical stock as you can see the quantities how many in reserve availability and as you can see here uh, it says there's 300 there okay so it didn't put any of the out of stock just so we can have at x edit quantity okay minus minus 300 well just change now it's, it's making it a little bit difficult all right let's find some of this yeah the hundred I'll do so I should better get to that quite quick I just want to see if it all I'll try and get just want to see if it moves it to an X to tell us it's out of stock that's what, that's why I'm just doing this rather quickly minus one no okay so it doesn't actually so this must be just that it's showing it's in the store so it doesn't actually update you that it's out of stock just something to be aware of okay so where else are we going so we've done catalog customers stocks okay we're through that one customer information it gives you a breakdown on the the customers themselves as you can see we've only got one customer but it will give you his address and all that sort of information what it, the orders that have gone through because it's the same customer their information relating to do they do they take the registration uh, partner offers are they interested in our weekly newsletter are they active what their orders are what dates they were what they view because sometimes for example they may not have bought those t-shirts and sweater but maybe you've got an offer on where there's a 20 percent off so you could send them a spe specific offer saying it's 20 percent off on the sweatering t-shirt if you buy this week and they may buy it as a pair um, any messages in the information system no any vouchers that they've got last connection when they were last on the site and their ip address that they arrived from basic information but it can be quite useful for encouraging more sales 
addresses it's very similar full address because they may have two addresses there you go Paris Miami um, I think this is down to two customers should that no sorry it's one customer yeah because they can have more than one address you see because you, you may have one that's an office address and one at home address because it depends where they are so you can have two addresses and you may want to confirm if they order something just via email just confirming the order blah 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 there's a bit of courtesy to because I know it's your last orders went to the home address but this one has gone to your business address and we go oh no it's in the wrong place okay customer service information this is quite useful there's probably no messages in here yet but this is a very very useful thing and I recommend logging into this as your main screen when you come in um, what happens here is you get customer service notifications here where people have got inquiries and problems because they can do this online and works as a bit of an email and live chat system um, I'm not going to cover it too much but it is something you want to spend a bit of time on yourself and learn to understand it because it is a very very useful tool and here we go there's the order message here delay hi unfortunately an item your order is currently out of stock this may cause a slight delay in delivery please accept our apologies blah 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 the important thing here is you may have more than just you on this website so somebody may receive an email saying you promised me this would be here by Friday and you could actually go on here and click on this and find out when they received another email which has not actually got the date on it fantastic um, but the an email was sent to them direct a message was sent to them directly saying there was going to be a delay although I did think it actually gave the date where's all the messages yeah there's a standard message as well you can fill that in so it's a default one every time uh, yeah it's not showing because normally come up here because when you start communicating it comes backwards and forwards on here so you can actually see the last messages and stuff and what's been said because this is like I said it's very useful this especially when you get lots of customers because you can track it and multiple people can deal with multiple customers through the interface merchandise returns bit about the returns process time limits etc etc obviously you'll get contacted through that as well and obviously the stats should take us back to the there we go this is very long-winded um, I'm not going to cover this but as you can see there's a lot of information let's just go over the surface visits registrants placed orders bought items percentage of registrations percentage of orders revenue then obviously available quantities, best categories, best customers, best suppliers, best vouchers. Lots of information that I am not going to cover in the video because it's one of those things you need to sit and look over. Now we're into an important bit which is the modules. A lot of these modules um, are pre-installed and some of them you won't actually need. And also there'll be other ones not installed that you will need. So we'll just go over this so as you can see these are already built in there's 37 already in and each one of these breaks down available quantity best vouchers charts visitors and visitors payments by check dashboard activity yada 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 long list of them theme modules as well relating to logins etc lots of information in there and I do recommend going through them because you will have to configure some of these manually especially things like the payment gateways but that's another story for another day in the catalog there's a lot that are not installed and as such there's a lot of selection the best ones the advanced search for example product labeling adding a blog MailChimp for your newsletters etc and the stats from that um, create bundles of products because example you may do a five t-shirt special etc there is a huge amount of stuff you can do with presser shop this is why um, I'm sort of promoting this and going through what you can do with it but this is a surface video it's already quite long but we'll keep going we're nearly there uh, design themes and logos you can get a lot of customized themes as well because you this is the theme I'm currently using but you can get other themes personally I try and keep as much to the original um, templates etc just in case the one I purchase online 
doesn't get updated so this is why i prefer to keep with the the themes and logos already built into presto shop but bearing in mind if a template wasn't updated and there was a major change you can always change your template anyway it may need a, need a little bit of playing around afterwards but you can alter it so that's my theme and logo as you can see all that needs editing because this is obviously the basic template this is the layout got a slider here you can move all this stuff around i'm not going to cover this today because obviously that's an, enough for an entire tutorial on its own shipping information is the same what carriers you got what preferences it's fairly extensive because obviously some are weight some are size some are whatever um, you may have special deals with some other couriers payments different payment methods different gateways uh, there's other things you can add to these on the modules as well so this can be fairly extensive as you can see bank transfer payment by check paypal bitcoin they all have different modules you can add international do you localize it locations you can actually trade to the different taxes translations you can add all this i'm not going to go over this in too much detail either because quite simply it's a lot of information to cover in one video now the shop parameters i will do on a separate video because this is going to be a tutorial on setting up your store so i'll leave that with you um, but pretty much i hope you got a bit of information on there it may look a bit daunting a li little bit too much but bear in mind once you get into this it gets easier over time as you get familiar with it thanks for watching